Hey guys, Philly Adventure Rider here. I've had my bike for six months now and I've just exceeded 13,000 k's on it. So I figured I might just do a review of what I think of her so far. Uh, in the review, I'm not going to focus m too much on like all the technical stuff of the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro, but more uh, if there's any uh, any specific features that I do really like or if there's anything that I dislike about it. Also I want to uh, mention all the improvements I've done to her and if I'm planning on doing any other improvements or changes and also if I am doing original parts or unoriginal ones. So here we go. To start with I'm gonna go through uh, all the nice things that I love about this bike and uh, first of all I'm gonna mention all the riding modes. The Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro comes with six different riding modes including Sport, Off-Road, Off-Road Pro, Rider, it's basically a customized one that you can choose yourself, uh, Rain and Road. Starting off with Road, uh, I guess that's the most common one to use, basic ones. Um, nothing particular to mention there. I use it when I'm on longer stretches or just an everyday road road trip. Sport, it gives you maybe a little bit extra kick comes, uh, when comparing it to the road one. Off-road, I, I almost never use this basic one. If I go off-road, I would use the Off-Road Pro. The difference between these two is that Afro Pro, then you see that the ABS is off and the traction control is all off. Uh, but with the Off Road one, the, base, the standard one, uh, it put the ABS in something called Off Road and the same as traction control. I'm not too sure how that is different from road and sport and rain, uh, but if you're going up a gravel hill where, where the surface is a bit loose, uh, the traction control is going to kick in on the standard one here uh, So you would just stop in the middle of the hill. So if you really want to go uh, up, Or well drive on loose surfaces like gravel I or in the forest. I always use the off-road pro um, So this off-road I I don't even know when to use it because either you're on road or off-road and You don't need the traction control when you're off-road because it's gonna kick in and then you're not gonna move forward. The rider one, it's like a customized one that you can choose how you want it. At the moment, I put a, uh, the ABS on road so that if I, I'm in rider mode, it will always have the ABS on, but I've taken off the traction control. Um, yeah, I don't use that too much. Rain, use all the time. I live in Norway and more specifically, Western Norway. Uh, so it rains all the time. This one I find the most different one from road and sport because uh, it kind of it kind of changes the throttle and the brakes a bit. Um, not that it kind of compromise anything, but it just makes it a bit smoother. Say if you're kind of hard on the throttle, then it's gonna kind of delay it just a slight, a uh, tiny bit, which. Is exactly what you want uh, on wet roads and also I feel like the traction control kind of kicks in a bit earlier which is also what you want because you don't want to be spinning around on the wet surface and to some of the really comfort I uh, comfort stuff with this bike that I really enjoy seat both rider seat and the passenger seat heated I love it and also the grips are heated uh, the grips, you've got like three different steps you can put it on. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I basically always use three, uh, the warmest one. And the uh, heated seat, you have two steps that you can use. And I also, I'm gonna get back to how I got the lower seat as an extra feature when I, or extra equipment when I bought the bike. The lower seat does not have the heating elements, just so you know. But now I finally changed it back to the normal seat. So on cold days or rainy days, I use the heated seat all the time and I'm really happy with it. Also mentioning the seat, 
Uh, I find it really comfortable. It's like soft padding, uh, which I like. Also, as many other adventure bikes nowadays, you can uh, you can see that I have it on a lower, like a lower step or adjustment. So now, uh, with the original seat and on the lower step, uh, the height of the bike or the, the saddle it's 85 centimeters and you can adjust it to up to uh, 87 centimeters um, which is always also a nice moving down to this side and the gear the quick oh, sh the quick shifter I didn't think that I would use it as much as I am, but now when I try out other bikes, I realize that I use it all the time. So it's a nice feature. I don't know if I would pay extra for it, but I'm pretty happy that I do have it. Other than that, it's a smooth bike. I haven't tried out too many other bikes, so I have don't have really have anything to compare it to, but uh, what I've tried so far and what other people say, uh, she's pretty smooth, both on road and off road. Of course, it's a heavy bike. It's a 200 plus kilo bike. So if you drop her in the middle of the forest, it, yeah, just learn how to pick her up. But just overall, pretty happy with the bike so far. So over to <laughs> the things that I like less about the bike. Um, these things not so much the bike but it's just been the whole experience i guess first off starting with the tires not these tires but um these are not the original uh, the original ones that i got that came with the bike um when you buy a rally or a rally pro you would think that you uh, the bike would come with some off-road tires but it didn't it came with street tires uh, I found that really odd because if you look on uh, Chime's website, you can see that one of the key features they list on this Rally Pro is the, oh, well, it says handbook approved Pirelli Scorpion tires. So I thought that meant that that should come with a bike. And also like most of the advertising pictures of the Rally Pro shows off-road tires or well, they show off-road tires. So I contact both my local dealership and Triumph and my dealership tried to contact Triumph regarding this. But the answer that we got was basically that it didn't mean that it was included. It just meant that you can use those off-road tires or the Pirelli Scorpion Rally tires on this bike that it was approved. So that was a bummer. So if you are expecting off-road tires with a bike, that might come as an extra cost just so you know uh, a couple of other things that i found really interesting when i bought the bike but i haven't been too happy with is that uh, triumph really promote this uh, triumph connectivity system and the gps that's also built into the screen uh, i've used the gps several times but Yes, I should have Googled it a bit more before I bought it, I guess. But just that it doesn't show a map. It just shows you maybe like the next time you're going to turn. And also, I don't know if the map is not really updated or anything, but it can tell you, oh, now you should turn or you should turn right in the three case. And then you come to the three case and it's just like a right turn. Like it's not an intersection or anything. Or it can tell you to turn or and also when you're going out of the roundabout it might say uh, like the second exit and then it shows an arrow going all the way around and then the second exit is right ahead or maybe more to the right and also if you are driving in the middle of the city and you have a lot of intersections coming up after each other uh, it takes a bit of time before the GPS actually updates, like the next step, which means that you might <laughs> drive past a couple of intersections before the bike is like, oh no, hold on a second, 200 meters behind you, that's where you were supposed to turn. So 
my wish list new GPS which is unfortunate because it's included in bike but yeah I don't really recommend that GPS and also just in general the connectivity system I've tried to work it out a couple of times but maybe I should try some more but it I don't really get it well I use intercom I have Cardo system or the Pactog system uh, which doesn't really connect up to the connectivity system and I've I can call through the bike which I like but I haven't really it doesn't really fix up who is calling it just shows you a number even though that's one of your standard callers so I think I, I think I have to look more through the connectivity system but that was definitely not just like an simple solution or quick fix or user friendly I guess so that I have to look a bit more into also two things that I have to mention um, I don't know if it's a negative thing but I've already had had two claims uh, to triumph regarding this bike um, some of you that might follow me on Instagram and have been following me for a while uh, might remember that I posted that when I was on a trip and we were on the highway suddenly out of nowhere this passenger peg just fell off I have no idea how and why try and fix it so I'm happy with that but what worried me a bit is that after I posted that that happened I got several comments from other Triumph people or more specifically Triumph 900 people telling me that they experienced the same that things small things just kind of keeps falling off uh, I don't know if it's if it's bad quality or if it's just a bad batch or if it's uh, the dealers who put them together the first time that I don't know uh, I haven't experienced anything other than that but I don't like that people come to me and say hey the same happened to me and stuff like that shouldn't happen just out of nowhere uh, also the second claim I had uh, it was not sure if you already know but the Triumph Tiger 9 Rally Pro comes with a pressure pressure monitor or pressure sensor in both front and rear tire and after I've driven her about six that uh, six six and a half thousand case um, suddenly it just came up a lot of warnings on the screen saying that check your monitor or no the pressure monitor and uh, stop the bike immediately I had to I could just exit the warning because I already checked it and I knew it was fine but the warning kept coming up like all the time and especially when you're on longer trips it's a bit annoying because it kind of blocks the rest of the screen um, so I had her to the dealership again they did some runs on her and told me that it came up like several error messages and they just reset it and they told me that if it happens again I would have to replace it and less than a week later it happened again and again and again and again so I had that replaced as well um, no issues with Triumph there but but yeah it's two claims so far so I think no also the riding position again this could be me doesn't have to be the bike but because i am short-legged i guess i'm 165 tall for those who wonder oh curious about that uh and also because of that i had the a lower seat when i first bought the bike and uh, now i've changed it to the original one after finally getting a bit more comfortable on the bike uh but the lower seat gets me lower to the pegs which means that the lower i am the uh, steeper angle I would have in my knees and on longer trips when you're sitting almost like on a rice uh, on a racing bike not that bad though but yeah uh, my knees tend to swell up a bit and it hurts so that's a bit annoying and also because my arms are short I I'm always kind of leant forward a bit uh, which is also a bit annoying but again it doesn't have to be the bike but Maybe, considering the seat and the pegs, 
that sh shouldn't be an issue for me because I'm only 165. So I can't imagine how that is for people that's 180, 190 at all. So, so yeah, that is definitely something that I would look at if I ever were to buy a new bike in the future. It would be like how I actually sit on it and if I can sit upright and have my legs comfortable on the pegs. So, to all the improvements I've done on her, uh, when I first bought her, I got the Triumph upper crash bars or engine protectors. And also because I had that one, I needed some uh, adapters or extra attachment stuff for the fog lights, but yeah, that's it. Uh, the crash bars, as you can see, money well spent. I uh, fell in a roundabout for about two months ago. Uh, I'm fine. My shoulder was hurting a bit for a couple of weeks, but it's fine now. And I'm so glad I got that I got the crash bars. Also, moving to the back, I got the arrow exhaust as an extra, and also just I think it was a month or two later after I bought the bike, I got the Triumph Pannier Expedition rails. Uh, so they are also original parts. Um, I don't have the high cases though. I have uh, on original luggage, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, but that could be a separate video. Also, what else have I done? Uh, yes, moving up to the handguards. I changed from the original to Bike Busters. I am so, so happy with the Bike Busters. Uh, I have to say that, unfortunately, this is not a promotion for bike buses, but I'm so, so happy with them. I dropped the bike so many times and look how it really took the hit uh, when I fell in the roundabout. Ref this one. And I think there would have been so much more damage to the bike, especially like all of these features here, if I didn't have bike busters. So I'm never going back. <laughs> Uh, so that I'm pretty happy about. Uh, also, changes I want to do uh, while I'm already here. After my fall, my mirror broke. So we need a new mirror. I've just been lazy. I've been talking about this mirror since it happened. But you kind of get used to one. But now when I'm riding through traffic all the time, I definitely need a new mirror. Uh, this brake lever it broke as well but it's just like the bit on uh the outer bit there that broke so probably not going to do anything about it until i might sell it in the future uh back to what i was talking about regarding my uh the riding position or how i'm sitting on the bike what i'm gonna do uh this winter or next spring uh to see if i can improve that is that I want to raise, I want to raise the, um, the handlebar. I'm not sure how much, two to five centimeters or something, but definitely to get kind of uh, the handlebars a bit higher up and a bit further towards me. So maybe I don't have to kind of lean forward all the time. Also, regarding that, I'm gonna see if I can lower the peg. Okay, this is uh, this is the peg that I kind of suffered from the crash. Uh, but it works still, even though it's broken. But I'm, I'm going to see if I can actually lower the peg a centimeter more without kind of compensating for the space to the ground. But I think that is really going to help. I know my partner did that on his T7 that I posted a picture of. And it's just amazing to sit on because you're just so comfortable with how your legs are. This bent here. My fault, 100%, and long story short, it was a big rock. Um, I think I will, will be looking at unoriginal parts when it comes to, when it comes to the sump guard, because as you can see, it's, well, it's done its job, so it's definitely good, good quality, I guess, but at the same time, I've been looking at others, and they look so much more solid than this. So, but I haven't decided yet, so if you, have any experience with any unoriginal sump guards that fit the Rally Pro, please let me know in the comments below. 
I'm, uh, I'm really interested in seeing what's out there and especially if someone already knows if they're working or not. So that I would really appreciate. And I think that was about it. Uh, that was a brief or long, not too, I talk too much, I talk way too much, a review about the bike, uh, the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. If there's anything you think I missed or if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. And if I receive lots of the same questions, I might just do a uh, separate video of it. I hope you liked it. I hope I pointed out something that you've been curious about. And thank you so much for watching and uh, please subscribe and like and all of that that everyone else on YouTube uh, asks you to do. I really appreciate it. And it would be really cool if you would share this video with anyone else that you think might find it interesting. So have a great day and see you all. Cheers.